They say you should never meet your heroes, but I was lucky enough to work beside my biggest hero for many, many years. And this is Chris Smith. And today we're going to talk about how it all started. Chris, tell us how you got going in photography. Well, that's very flattering. I mean, thank you very much. Um, I started on the local paper and I knew absolutely nothing about photography. Great training. You know, you did everything. Mixed chemicals, process to process the plates and um, So you, and they, the were, they were using plate cameras at that time? Plate cameras, yeah. yeah. But it was great in Hartlepool because they, it, was, it had docks, it had a fishing fleet, industry, and you know, there's always something to, to photograph. Hugh McElbany and yourself travel the world really doing sports. Yeah, yeah. What were the highlights of those trips? It had to be Ali mm -hmm. as a personality. There's been nobody like him. And I mean, Ali, when you think his life was sport, but I mean, he took on the US government. He beat them. You know, he was incredibly athletic as a boxer. He was uh, quite magical. Um, he was funny to be with. So I did other things with Hugh, a lot of boxing, and, um, but the highlight would have had to be in the round Ali. And was access easy? I mean, could you get into gyms? And yeah, things? yeah you'd, you'd turn up to, to the gym at Fifth Street in Miami, always welcoming. Or when I first it w was there, Ali was Cassius Clay. Tell us about some of the great uh, Ali pictures, you know, so your favorites from uh, those gym days. One that is extraordinary, and it, it's funny, it, in a way it's a corny picture, and it's Ali with the Beatles, um, and they, the Beatles and Ali are fooling about. And uh, it, it's a corny old idea, but the, <laughs> the mitigating circumstances it's a picture that contains the five, or arguably, the five most recognizable faces on the planet in one picture. You know, it's a picture that constantly uh, has people's interests. So. But you, what the great thing was, you were quite at liberty to just wander around the gym. Mm. And Ali would see you and he'd, you know, he'd recognize you, he'd give you a hello. And there was no restrictions, mm. absolutely none. But Did you prefer boxing training to the actual fights yeah, but yeah by a long way I mean, yeah the fights you know are limited you know what you can do training you're going to you know you can interpret it yourself mm. you know you could do your own thing you could work out where the light was what the background is to a degree um where in the fight proper you you're given a position and you're stuck with it and often a long way away oh it brings me I'll tell you well yeah you You've been through it, Eamon, but I'll tell you a funny one. The first, that uh, first fight with Joe was at the garden, Madison Square Gardens. And uh, I teamed up with Monty, a mate, Monty Fresco, a great mate of mine, and a man who worked for the Mirror. And uh, terrific photographer, great, great to be with, very funny, great companion. So they gave Monty and me a ticket each, something they called the hockey box which was about 60 meters from the ring. It was a long, long way. But uh, strangely enough, it turned out to be a, a good position as it happened. In the 13, 14, Joe has a terrific hook and he hit Ali and he dumped him on his back. Mm. And we were, had a great position. Uh, Monty and I had almost identical pictures of Ali going on his back. His feet were coming up in the air and Joe, having just hit him with a left hook, they started turning away to go to his corner. The referee is telling him to go to the corner. It turned out what we thought was a bad position turned out to be a really quite a graphic position. So who are photographers? We're not always the best judges. And did that uh, formula pay off in the McGuigan fight? You know, your famous picture a of McGuigan in the with corner. With Barry. Yeah. yeah. The most interesting thing about boxing isn't always the fight. Mm. You know, incidentals tell you uh, much more. And the picture with Barry I'd got pictures of him fighting, but it was 110 degrees Fahrenheit in the ring. It was unbelievably hot. And his style of fighting was up pressing, pressing all. Um, and I noticed in uh, the 13th, the break in the 13th round, I was watching, up, I was ringside, but I had on, as you did then, a, a, about a 35 and an 85 to cover the ring. And uh, there's no need for a telephoto lens, it's useless at that angle. But I noticed the activity in the corner and I saw a glimpse of Barry's face and he looked exhausted. 
between the corner man and his manager, they would try to focus him on the next round. So I thought, uh, there's a picture there. I did that round as, as the bell went. I put the 180 on. And uh, I just waited and looked for an opportunity to, uh, to see if I could see that face again. It was an you know, extraordinary boxing picture that told you far more about it, uh, just slugging each other. One of your greatest preview pictures, an Olympics or the World Cup or whatever, was in Calgary. Tell us how you thought about it and how you achieved it. Well, I was trying to again marry the, the event to the, to the location. And uh, I found a slope in Calgary where I could see the, the skiing, the ski jumper, plus the city, using the city uh, skyscrapers as a background. But it entailed going a long way back, uh, a long telephoto, to squeeze the ski jumper. And because the town, the city, is about seven miles away. But what it had the, uh, the satisfaction of was it did locate it. And it was a very unusual picture. I mean, <coughs> I sat on that picture. I was wiring it. I sat on it for two days before I processed it. Because you know what us photographers are like? We're all plagiarists. You know, if anybody had seen it, oh, I was going to do that. So uh, I sat on it the Friday night before uh, Saturday's paper, printed paper. I processed it and wired it. Did these pictures create a Chris Smith style? <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, if you put a number of them together, you can start to see very strong graphic images. I'd like to think so. You know, um, from the skiing from to the silhouettes and the horses, everything is, I, I, how can I put it, it, it it's very graphic. Mm. And, and in those days, obviously, black and white, you know. It, yeah. it, and I just wonder yeah. if there is, if you think you have a style. I don't, in a way, what, what attracted or attracts me with in taking those pictures is, the, is light, the play of light. And um, things that you have to, in a way, see in black and white rather than colours, make sure that the figure or the subject was in context of a much easier clinical background, so you could. But it's really about, you know, the use of light. And, and did you find you could experiment uh, with non-important races? You know, like the two o'clock at Newbury, before the big cup um, races. No, no I, d I didn't do that. I, I used a slight kind of all eggs all in one basket kind of. I just <laughs> go for the whole thing. Somebody once said, do you, yeah, do, do, do you practice? I said, N no, not really. It's, it's the, the other thing is about, I remember things that uh, just happened. I remember going to, uh, I was going to West Ham football, and I was early. I used to, that was an obsession, getting to places early. And I was going by, and I saw Walthus uh, Dogs was on. So I thought, I haven't done dog racing for, for years. So I <laughs> went in and I just asked if I could photograph racing them. They said, yeah, sure, if you want to. I got permission. And I went down and it was just totally because I was near yeah. Walter's third dog track. Yeah. And I took a picture, which is quite a graphic picture, yeah. long telephoto of dogs coming around. And I thought, that's, that's, that's good. Those um, dogs look quite scary. They do. They when yeah, I look at that yeah, picture, yeah, I mean those that, that was a surprise to me. Dogs, yeah, yeah, and I thought, wow, and then I tried it again, and I realised the first time I did it was was exceptional. But I, the second time, I, it wasn't like that at all. The dogs didn't fall in the right place, and you had to pre-focus. They go so quick, yeah. you couldn't f follow. You know, it's pre-focused on a given spot, and you know, you you just worked out when to fire the shot up. One of my favourites of yours is a Tour de France taken from the back of a cyclist, probably in a sprint or something, yeah. about to go. It's all legs and shiny shoes and saddles. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. That, what that, it's the time trial yeah. at, uh, in outside Bordeaux. Yeah. And I'd, I'd done lots of, you know, pictures of the peloton going through places up and down mountains. I thought, just try and see a, a different angle. But it's a very... Even though it sounds cluttered, it's not cluttered, it's very clean. 
It, mm. it stands out, doesn't it? You found it's the old old one eighty that you know, yeah. and you make sure that you know there's no kind of obstructions. There's nothing in the background. It's kind of yeah. Yes, it's a, in a way it's a concentration of of the mind and seeing it uh, to the exclusion of everything else. Yeah, that's a brilliant picture. One of my favourites. Okay. <laughs> Another famous picture of yours is of Alan Wells, and not winning a race, but starting a race. Starting. Yep. When you went there that day, were you going to do it? Or, as you said earlier, did you react to how the stadium is and maybe the access that you got at the start? Yeah, I, I knew the stadium and it had a, a, like a trench along the, uh, along the side of the, the track. But we had access to anywhere in it. I thought, well, let's bring the changes. Why go to the, the finish? I'll go to do the start, different, and I can get into a position which looks interesting. In my mind's eye, I could see what uh, what it could be like, but I was shooting landscape on an 85, and uh, getting that's the pretty start close. in the background. That's pretty close pretty for close. an Olympics picture. Y yeah, yeah. Um, we're about maybe four yards back from the side of the track, and uh, started in the background, so it, it was ideal. And I just waited till you know I thought it was right. Everything fell into place. You know, I mean, it, it could have been different if he'd have been slower out of the blocks, or but it just worked. The, you know, the position of his hand and. Yeah, but what do you do if he? You know, in cricket terms, they say bat across face. You know, what do you do if Alan Wells in a final of a hundred meters and all you've got, all you can see is his hand? I mean, how do you explain that to your pitcher? <laughs> well, these days you'd look at the next frame and you've probably got to him, yeah, but then no, yeah. you didn't. Um, it was just. You know, uh, I don't know what I would have said. I was, <laughs> I thought I'd uh, do it this way, but that was never. Oh no, a, no, never, I, 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 never, I, I, no, there was never an answer to anyone. Not I'm, a, I'm applauding your, your your guts for, <laughs> for giving it a go. Yeah. And but what it, it worked what out. What it is yeah. is actually it's a landscape yeah. picture and cropped off because they are you know all way off focus because yeah. I'm on on Alan and printed as an upright. Yeah. But this picture won a big award for you. What was the award? Sports picture of the year, I think. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And how many times have you won Sports Photographer of the Year? Four, I think. Four. Four. A couple of individual Sports Pictures of the Year. We as sports photographers love our characters. You know, Ali, you, you've, got, you've got miles of pictures of, of Ali, which is brilliant. George Best is another one that you've got some fantastic pictures. And in golf, Seve. Tell us about your Seve. successes with Seve. <laughs> Seve was, uh, he was iconic. I, I photographed, you know, from Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, the modern tiger, and, but Seve was special. I saw him when he was 17. He's just broken up with my dear friend Dudley Douse. We went out to see Seve at uh, Santander, or near Santander in uh, Spain, where he came from. And uh, first photograph him hitting a golf ball on the beach, which he used to do as a kid, um, and followed him through his career. At Sandwich, um, I used to say to, to Dudley, you know, I, you've got to get a fix of Seve, even if you, he wasn't doing well, and you had to be following the leaders because, but you always do a little bit on Seve, got to see how Seve going. And for spectators, he was wonderful. He would be in trouble and then he'd make a marvelous recovery. You would be up, you'd be down. He was just, he was such a flamboyant character. And uh, I went to Sandwich uh, Friday before the Saturday was the for me the press day the important day for Sunday's paper but Friday you would just do like scene setters and I've sort of sought out Seve was coming on the fairway and a squall of rain hit him and he grabbed his windshield and he just threw it around himself as protection it was just an instinctive thing and, and of course the the analogy of a, a cape really Spanish bullfighter, that's what the yeah. analogy was. And somebody showed him the picture afterwards. He was really a bit fed up with, with his game. I said, what do you think of it, Seve? And he said, it's a good picture. I said, why? He said, it shows just how I felt. <laughs> Which, in a way, is what you want. And uh, he, he was just a wonderful character though, to, f to follow on the golf course. He really was, this flashing smile. and He'd be up and down. Hey, these are the people you think, yeah. I've got a chance today, yeah. you know, George Best is there, Ali's there, Seve's there. You've got a chance, and we do follow them. You've yeah. got to keep an eye on them. Oh yeah, because yeah. they are do. larger than life, aren't they? Yeah. And, uh, 
but you've had some great successes. You, you must be very proud of your work all, all these years. And well, I certainly enjoyed it, and yeah. uh, I hope it's uh, it's entertained and some people. <laughs>